Hi, I wanted to share a dream that I had last night. So September 30th, morning of October 1st. And then I'm going to share some Bible scriptures. All right. Um, I had a dream that I was with some other people. And we were standing in like a town square. I was outside and there was a big clock up above us like this. And the clock stopped moving. Um, it stopped and then it started, the minute hand started to like just spin around. And um, the hand started to fall off. Um, they were gonna. I knew that they were gonna fall off. They were breaking because they were spinning around, and they were becoming loose. I went underneath the clock and I held my hands out, um, and I don't know why, but I could feel tiny little pieces of glass um, from the face of the clock, probably from under where the hands were, um, falling, breaking, and I showed them to. Um, some of the people that were with me and I said yeah it's starting to break it's starting you know it's gonna break and fall apart and so they said well we better get somewhere safe and so we started to leave the area and look for shelter and just when we started to leave the clock started to break the minute hand the hands the minute and hour hands started to fall and then there was like shaking um, everyone that was standing outside they were confused and the ground started shaking and um, everyone was looking for cover and running you know going to the inside of certain areas and trying to leave the whole you know dangerous area and when that started happening we found another area of safety and then there were people that were trying to um, loot, steal from other people, or go into the places and take things. And um, so we had to leave that area. And they were robbing other people, but miraculously they didn't come and try to take any, anything from us. And then there were people that started shooting um, it was just like madness. Uh, they started shooting at random people. So we prayed and the Lord protected us and none of us uh, got injured by all that going on. So we escaped and we went out into the uh, country area. And there we met some other people. And we were there, I don't know how long, but... We were there and we knew that we couldn't keep in one spot. We needed to keep moving and we met a person that had like like this, like a buggy or a wagon and it was larger than this. And instead of two horses, she had three. And so we, um, we asked her if we could stay with her. She was a Christian. And she said, sure, she would love the company because all she had was a, it was just her and her small dog. And so the people that were with me and her, we were all Christians. And we proceeded to get into the wagon. And one of the people in our group, um, a young man who's a friend, uh, who's the son of one of my friends, he was like, there wasn't enough room in the wagon. He could have squeezed in, but he said, no, that's okay, I'll walk. So he was walking behind the wagon and um, there was three horses they were pulling us and um, we we're looking for other places to go and as we came upon like a small rural area with some really nice houses um, we walked through the town like a rural area like this it was like out in the country sort of and we, we would walk we were walking with the wagon and the horses through this area and at this point we were looking for supplies but 
we were looking to trade and such not we weren't going to steal um, we peered through the windows to see if people were home or what was going on in this area and everybody that was inside the houses they like locked themselves in we noticed they had like I can't see through the window here but it looks like there's some fruit they had tons and tons of vegetables and fruits um, inside their houses didn't see a lot of growing going on on the outside maybe they had greenhouses or they had already harvested them I don't know but I just it was the dream in the dream there were almost every house there was one or one or two people inside and they were um, there was a lot of wasted food because a lot of a lot of um, cantaloupes watermelon and pumpkins were cut open and a lot of the meat was just sitting there not getting eaten or used or cooked and I saw one old man he was um, you know collecting all the seeds so he was collecting all the seeds and um, like almost like you know they were harvesting them like they were gold like you know and in that time food was a very um, in my dream food was scarce and so they they were saving the seeds to grow more food obviously but it was just sort of a tragedy that they were that they were wasting a lot of the the food in the meantime okay so what the Lord revealed to me was that time is almost the time is almost here um, like the clock for things to start happening for the Lord's judgment and um, things written in the word to start happening in our day um, in the end times and you know once it starts happening it's not going to stop okay there just like a lot of other people have said there's a shaking coming and it's to shake up um, to shake up and stir the people um, so that some may repent and turn to him and while others that are lukewarm will wake up and give their lives and their, all of their heart to him and for and during this time and then also to punish the wicked but during this time he's not going to forsake those that are truly serving him he will give us a way of escape and protect those that are his and he'll lead us to safety just like him leading um, us to the lady that was there in the country with the three horses and the wagon all right now I think the three horses symbolized I feel that the three horses symbolized the third seal and that because right after that it was about it was about the food the food shortage and it being as valuable as gold and silver um, because soon after we found her and we were that's what we were doing was looking for places we were looking for seeds and we were also looking for a place that we could um, you know grow them and have and produce our food and but then there was some people that were many of the people inside these houses were rich and they were not serving the Lord um, and they were hoarding you know the food and the seeds um, we had some of our own and we were looking for a place to plant them uh, and also in the dream at the very end there was a there was a man who my husband knew and he wasn't a Christian and we told him what we wanted to plant some seeds and he was telling us that with the water shortage and you know there's only like one week allowed uh, to plant and that time had passed but then he said 
but he knew our situation and he said that he would help us and he would um, find a place that we could, you know, plant some seeds. So the Lord provided um, a way, you know, and provided a person that would help us. All right. In Haggai 2, it says um, in verse 6, For as, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 13. Um, you see. We'll start with 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like that of many people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts musters the army for battle. They come from a far country. From the end of heaven, the Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. Wail for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt and they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. It matches up with Joel too. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will halt the arrogance of the proud, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a mortal man more rare than fine gold, a man more than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So the Lord knows those who are his. He sees our hearts. So he can tell. We, we you know, sometimes people act like a Christian, but they don't their outward actions appear as a Christian but they don't act as a Christian so by your by the fruits they will know us and the Lord doesn't need those fruits because he sees our heart and he already knows the kind of person we are if we're truly repentive and if we've truly given ourselves to him so that's a wondrous and, and fearful thing we need to acknowledge, we have to realize that he sees everything and he knows us even more than we know ourselves. So I urge everybody and myself to keep that in mind and pray. If you don't know him, I pray that you seek him because he says if you seek, you will find. Ask him if he's real. Be in his word, the Holy Bible. Pray and, and seek him, and you'll find him, and he'll reveal himself to you, and repent and give your life to him. Turn away from your sin and ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Because we can't fool God. He knows He knows us more than we know ourselves. And in these days, we need if we're if we're truly wanting if we're wanting his protection. And guidance and, and help then we need to be seeking and living for him Psalm 145 starting in verse 14 the Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down the eyes of all look expectantly to you 
and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He, will, he also will hear the, their cry and save them. <clears throat> the Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. Psalm 91. This is an awesome chapter. It's short, and I've shared it before, and others have too. It's about his safety um, when we trust and abide in him. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, the, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, and you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With, life, with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13-15 And I use the NET um, translation because the word t temptation it also is referred to as trial. So no trial has overtaken you that is not faced by others, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tried beyond what you are able to bear, but with the trial will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. So he will always give us a way to endure or overcome our trials and temptations. Ezekiel 7:19, speaking of the end times and once the destruction comes in, um, you know, the Lord's pouring out his wrath. It says, they will throw their silver into the streets and their gold will be like refuse. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. So it won't, money won't help them. They will not satisfy their souls nor fill their stomachs because it became their stumbling block of iniquity. So we can't trust in man or in mammon or in riches because it's not going to be able to deliver us. Trusting in something other than the Lord is not going to deliver you from his wrath. It's not going to deliver you from anything the Lord is inflicting on the the unrighteous in the end times money won't buy you help it won't satisfy your soul it won't fill your stomach it's going to be a stumbling block to many that are rich but do not have the Lord this is Psalm 55 starting at verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry aloud, 
and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from of old, Selah, because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. He has put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. God bless.